Well, let's jump into it. So we're here in uh, very sunny and actually really hot Los Angeles today. Um, coming at you again with another edition of our weekly product research training. Um, this is a really cool one. We're going to be doing things a little bit different. We, last week, we uh, implemented some new strategies. This week, we've actually put um, a little presentation together to, to kind of lend a little bit more context to what we're talking about. Um, yeah, so if it's your first time, it's going to be something a little bit different again. So that's uh, a bit more just an overview of your mindset behind product research before we just get stuck into it. We give you the outline of um, what you should be thinking about before you even dive into Amazon. So I think it'd be really useful. Yeah, perfect. So uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Darren, uh, one of the lead project managers here at Zong Guru. Uh, this is Josh. He's one of our success, uh, customer success representatives and also a project manager. Um, and yeah, we're just here to spend the next hour uh, making sure that you have a full understanding of what you should be looking for on Amazon to find really great product opportunities and how the Zongaroo tool suite uh, makes that easy. Um, anything you want to add? No, I'm just uh, looking forward to it. I think you'll get, I think you'll get a lot out of it. Um, if you're stuck in your product research phases, this is a perfect uh, webinar for you, perfect training, because we show you just how to find products within your hobbies that, are, um, yeah, so you, there's ways to find your products without having to come up with the idea off the top of your head. So yeah, looking forward to it. Perfect. So we, uh, I just want to reiterate this. Uh, we have two places where you can uh, reach us inside of the webinar. Uh, the first is in the chat, which it seems like everybody's gotten accustomed to, um, which is great. That's how we, I want to make sure that you guys um, you know, hear us loud and clear. If there's any technical troubles, uh, if, if there's any uh, interaction with the group, that's where you want to direct uh, that type of traffic. Yeah. Uh, four questions that you want us to answer. At the very end, we're going to be doing a Q&A. Um, so ask the questions in the Q&A. If you ask them in the chat, we're just not going to see them. Uh, Josh is going to be keeping an eye on the chat as well, making sure that anything that does accidentally get left over there gets moved over. Yeah. Uh, and there will be a recording, like a replay of this recording um, sent out after maybe tomorrow after this um, session. So yeah, everyone who signed up will get a replay as well. Yeah. And uh, if you haven't visited our help center yet, we have uh, all of our past uh, replays as well. Um, it's a goal of ours to find uh, a really cool product uh, that checks all the right boxes. Yeah. Um, so this week we have a, a fresh one. Next week we'll have a fresh one. And then the, the prior weeks, we've all, also just deep dove into uh, individual products. So make sure that you go back and watch those replays because uh, there's probably nuggets and information that you'll You'll learn in those other ones yeah if you just want to steal a product and skip the whole product research phase you can just go back and pick one of those i think that'll be <laughs> yeah exactly um uh, cool let's dive into it cool so like i said we are here to cover everything you need to know about product research all the strategies uh how to use the tools properly uh, that zong guru offers uh, but then also kind of kind of just some of the basic theory uh and then the, the numbers uh and and kind of how you can better filter uh, between good and bad product opportunities on Amazon. It's our goal to, to spend the next hour really deep diving in this and, and leave you better prepared. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, the first thing is um, just, just the agenda for this training session. We have about an hour that we're going to spend, uh, probably about 45 minutes or so on the presentation, uh, and then the rest for Q&A at the end. Uh, so we're going to be covering the theory and the basic skills, tips, and some strategy that we've learned. We do a lot of product research. Uh, we do feel like we're, we're very much experts in this space. Uh, so we're going to be sharing some of our tips. We're going to go through the methodology, uh, which takes really a, a, a whole holistic look um, at products. And, and it's called the niche rater method. It's really how we, uh, we specify uh, winning and, and, and losing products on Amazon. And then we're going to be jumping into the tools that will help you uh, basically generate ideas around finding a niche. So if you feel like you're stuck, uh, we've got a really good uh, methodology for you to, uh, to to generate ideas, and that's going to be using one of our tools, Keywords on Fire. Uh, we're going to be analyzing and validating that data using the Chrome extension, uh, looking at the competition uh, as a whole, and then we're going to be looking at seasonality and, and kind of understanding how you should be planning um, your, your inventory, uh, especially if you're, you're looking to launch. You need to understand the seasonality of the product so you don't run out of stock, uh, especially right after you, you launch. Uh, and then finally, we'll be looking at making the products even better with, uh, with love, hate. So does that sound good? Sounds good. Let's get into it. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So very high level. This is at, at the bare minimum what we are looking for on Amazon. So we're looking for a product 
that is generating at least $10,000 a month. Yeah. The typical Amazon seller makes uh, a 30% net margin, which means that on $10,000 in gross sales per month, uh, you're either putting $3,000 in your pocket or even better, investing it back into your business so that you can launch more products. That means that uh, per year, you're putting $36,000 in your bank account annually. That's US dollars single, too. Yeah, that's USD off of a single product yeah. um, at the bare minimum. So, uh, and then finally, we're going to be taking a look at, at what it means to be differentiated and, and why that is so important to not only the protection of your product, but also the, the long-term sustainability. Yeah, that's good. I think that really emphasizes like one product making 10K a month, um, 36K US, that's almost 50K Australian. So one product could uh, theoretically replace an income. So the amount of effort and work you put into finding the perfect product straight away is like, yeah, it could set you up for success and to get out of that job. That That's the whole reason you started the Amazon business in the first place for. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. Does that sound good guys? Let us know in the chat. Good morning, Paul. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, baby. Yes, <laughs> awesome. 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 <laughs> All right, cool. Sweet. So I don't know about you guys, but when I first started doing my product research, uh, this picture here on the right was what it felt like looking at products on Amazon. Um, it, it seemed like it was just uh, always a mess. It was too much to choose from. There's like yeah. too many opportunities out there. So you're just like looking at it. It's just like so much overwhelmed that, yeah, I think we'll figure out how, how to, to simplify that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's choice overload. Um, you know, the, uh, what we're going to do is, is basically make this picture non-existent for you when you're doing your product research. Um, so the way that we're going to do that, a few tips is uh, understanding the theory, understanding what the niche reader method means, and then how you can use the tools um, that are offered by Zonguru to, to validate uh, that methodology. We're going to be uh, making sure to focus on setting goals. And uh, John, CEO of Zonguru, talks about this uh, frequently the difference between setting milestones and minor stones and how setting small minor stones, you know, things that are really, really small that you know that you can accomplish on a daily or weekly basis, things like, you know, I want to spend uh, 20 minutes of product research a day, uh, just devoted to product research, uh, no distractions, how uh, that minor stone, if it's uh, replicated with consistency, um, can help you reach that milestone of launching your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, hundredth product. Yeah. Um, so it's super important there. I know when I first started, I just to get over the overwhelm and, and more so just to keep yourself task focused. I found that every time I had a new idea, I've been jumping from one task to another and not getting a whole lot of anything done. Um, so old fashioned method, just notebook. Every time I had an idea, I'd write it out um, and just tick it off as I went along. If I had a new idea came up while I was in the middle of something, I wouldn't, wouldn't go off task. I would just write it down and then just keep going with, uh, Keep going with the project at hand and just keep ticking them off in order of most importance. I think that was actually very invaluable for getting me to uh, like launch a product really quickly. So um, stay focused and yeah, track your goals. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, just a couple quick ones as well. You know, reducing the obstacles when you're focusing on your Amazon business. Focus on your Amazon business. Don't get distracted. TV, phones. Uh, we we live in a world right now where it's too easy to get distracted. So. Try to focus as consistently as you can. Go down the interesting rabbit holes. Uh, we talk about this a lot. There's, there's a bunch of different ways that you can start your product research now, but um, you know, just having fun with it, thinking creatively, uh, seeing where the, the, the listings and, the, and where Amazon takes you as you begin to click through products. Um, you, know, you have an unlimited usage of the Chrome extension, which we're going to show off uh, if you have a Zonguru account. So you can literally use it a million times if you want to. So just make sure that you know, when you see products that are interesting, uh, even on the street, that you're taking a mental note of that to come back and, and look to see how those products perform on Amazon. Um, and then use Keywords on Fire to generate ideas. We're gonna be talking about that a little bit. Um, and then use categories and buyer behavior. What this means is you know, Amazon is trying so hard to make sure that when somebody goes to amazon.com or, or any other marketplace, that somebody's making a purchase. So even if you're looking at you know, just an uh, example that we go back to all the time is yoga mats. They're going to show you a bunch of other things that people who have bought yoga mats are also interested in or have bought in the past. You know, if you feel like you're stuck, see where Amazon is going to take you um, and, and just continue to run those searches. 
Uh, and then finally, don't overthink it and have fun. As Josh was saying, you know, the, everybody has their why. You know, a lot of people, it's, you know, trying to break free of the nine to five uh, and, and have that financial and, and work freedom. Uh, and to do that, you need to, to have fun and, and, and really trust your instincts as well. Um, and then finally, this is just a, a note that I put down as well is just use the internet to spark an idea. Um, I, I feel like sometimes it's cheating uh, because we do a lot of product research, um, you know, and, and I get like product research block all the time. So yeah. what I'll do is I'll just run a quick Google search, you know, October 2019, uh, amazing hot products. And you're going to see all these blog posts with like really cool things that you can buy that should be generating ideas for you as a seller as well. And there's a reason those products are in the in those blog posts is because they're probably selling really well at the moment and trending. So it's like their products that are obviously selling well, that's a good place to start. Absolutely. Cool. So a couple more slides before we jump into the live example, guys. All right. So the niche rater method, I'm going to cover this really high level. Um, these four criteria make up the niche rater method. And this is how we determine if we have a winner or a loser on Amazon, it needs to check the right boxes here. So the first is demand. We need to make sure that people are buying the product. So we're looking for uh, sales volume on page one that at least has a $10,000 to $20,000 a month um, across the category. Uh, and then also is generating uh, a certain criteria search volume, usually between at least four and 6,000. Uh, those are really good determining factors of if people are interested in buying the product, which is obviously one of the most important things at the very, very, uh, at the very, very top. Competition uh, is the second one, and that's really important because you know, especially as a new seller, you're you're basically swimming upstream. You know, yeah. a lot of sellers have already generated a bunch of reviews. You might see people with three, four, five hundred reviews, a thousand reviews. Um, you know, understanding when a niche is too competitive. Uh, is really important. So you don't waste time, you don't waste money investing in an opportunity that um, you probably had a very slim chance of competing in anyways. Yeah, there's products that have been there since the very start of Amazon. So they've got that history of being a good seller and Amazon knows that those products convert. So they're just going to keep sending traffic to those products. So find those categories where the competition isn't so strong and you've got a lot better chance of getting in there. Yeah, perfect. Um, and then just a note on that too is, you know, how well optimized are those sellers as well? You know, do they, do they have EBC? Do they take advantage of all their photos? You know, how well optimized is their listing copy? There's a lot that goes into that, but understanding, uh, not only the, um, the, uh, the, the, the strength, but also the, the optimization of those uh, competitors is key as well. Uh, and then the last two are investment. So what is, what is the approximate cost, uh, to launch? Uh, and stay in stock for at least three months on Amazon. And, and we, we typically see a sweet spot of around $12,000. Um, so understanding and expecting that um, from right off the bat is also really important. Um, you know, you are starting a business, uh, so you do have to understand that investing some capital behind that business is, is going to be critical. Yeah. Um, and, and without it, you, you probably won't be able to launch successfully. And know your numbers up front. Start, start off with a budget of what you're willing to spend and write down all those one-off costs, um, what you think your investment is gonna need, need to be to stay, in this, uh, stay with this niche and work backwards from there because it's, uh, you need to know your numbers before you start. Otherwise you, you might get to uh, time to restock your product and just not have the capital to restock when your product might be doing very well. So plan ahead, know your numbers, very important. 100%. And then the last one is uh, potential. So uh, what this means is, uh, you know, how, how much, what is your revenue potential? What is your uh, opportunity to actually put dollars either back into your pocket or invest back into your business? And that has a lot to do with the demand and the sales velocity of the, the actual niche itself, but also the, the price of the products because uh, most people operate on about a 30% margin. And obviously if you're selling a $10 product, that only means that you're putting $3 either back into your business or into your bank account for every sale. Uh, you know, we, we typically like to look for products that are priced at about $25 or above on average, uh, because that just means you know, you're putting seven, eight, nine, potentially dollars or more into your, um, for every sale you make. Yeah, that's good. Cool. All right. Cruising right along. The last thing that we want to focus on as well, this is so, so critical to success on Amazon right now is differentiation. And this is a soft skill. Um, it's one that I think some people have very naturally an instinct for some people learn over time, 
um, but it's a, it's a clear answer to the question, why would somebody choose my product on page one over the competition? Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can differentiate, um, you know, whether that's packaging, that's the design of your product, it's the way that you brand, the way that you connect with your customers, um sizes bundling photos photos very important yeah, yeah photos for sure that's the easiest way to differentiate yourself especially on page one even, um, yeah and even if you are a seller already and you're and you have your product and you're wondering like why isn't it selling well really good question to ask yourself is put your product against the the top five products in your category and try not to have a biased look maybe even ask some friends which product would you buy the most would you buy your product over the competition and then if the answer is no how are you going to how are you going to improve that? And the best way usually is with your photos. If you if you've already got a product made, come up, pay the money, and uh, come up with some really really creative photos. That 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 will step it up for sure. Absolutely. All right, cool. So now we've covered the basics. Uh, yeah. We've added a little bit of context, so now what we're about to show, we've got a really cool and exciting uh, product uh, to to deep dive into. We're going to show you how we found it uh, and then why it's validated by the data. Uh, and then maybe some ways that we can make that product better. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'll let you take over. Uh, Josh, what are you gonna show us here? All right, so I wanna show you a method that you, if you have been uh, signing in with us on these weekly webinars, you would have seen us uh, go through this method last week, but this is more for those people, well, it's great for everyone. This is the way I do product research, but for people that it just, when you're getting to Amazon and you're just getting overwhelmed, you don't know where to start, this is a great place to start. So I use the Keywords on Fire tool. Um, the Keywords on Fire tool has lots of moving parts, lots of data. I'll show you the main points for product research so we just don't overcomplicate over things. So uh, what Keywords on Fire does is you can, you can add a product by the phrase. Um, you type in your phrase here, click search, and it will run a, a session on that, uh, that particular search term and it will come up with all the relevant search terms for that product and give you lots of data on sales, uh, sales search volume and things like that. I'll show you in the next screen. Um, I ran a search on yoga roller. I just thought yoga mats, that's something we use all the time. It's super competitive. I wonder if we can find a product still in the yoga niche uh, with this tool and I can show you how we did that. So to open up the um, session, you wanna click on this little I button and this opens up all the data for, uh, for uh, what was it, yoga, yes. yoga roller. Yeah. Okay, cool. So at first look, it's a bit overwhelming. We, there's lots of data here. The first thing we wanna look at, we've got a list of keywords down the left-hand side, but the, there's three main um, points that I wanna look at. So we wanna look at uh, demand of a product. Is this product, are people looking for this product and are they buying it? Is it generating a lot of money? And competition, like how many reviews does this product have? Am I going to be able to compete? So an, an easy way to just quickly, if I'm, if we've obviously got too many keywords just to look at straight away here. The keywords on fire tool, we can use filters. So a quick filter that we just, I want to be on too quick. Yeah. Just really quick, because this kind of ties back to the niche reader method, which yeah. is again, what we're looking for is, um, is, is that, that demand and competition being in the the like medium yeah. heat to to lukewarm heat. We don't want typically now on Amazon if uh, there's a lot of demand, like really really high demand for a product. If there's not um, a high competition yet, there surely will be soon. Um, so what we like to look for is as many of those medium demand yeah. keywords and niches because those are way less competitive. And you have it, yeah maybe you're not gonna you know, hit one out of the park with a $500,000 earner a month. Yeah. But if you start to stack 30, $40,000 earners on top of each other, um, you know, you can quickly be a six figure a monthly seller uh, by just rinsing and repeating. And I also just want to call so something out really quick before you show off the filters. Yeah, yeah. um, so for the, the uh, term yoga roller, we've, we can see 298 total unique relevant keywords, like you're saying, um, which, directly um, relate back to this this original niche because what we're doing is we're we're starting with a general broad idea yeah and now we're going to use the filters to try to see if we can uh identify those medium demand medium competition but this is a huge category this is almost a this is a 5.3 million dollar uh, mm -hmm. category just across 300 keywords a month just for the just for yeah. the yoga rollers so yeah and this uh the search uh total search volume 
This is straight from Amazon. So Amazon actually gives us this data. So they're getting half a million searches for yoga roller a month. So that's pretty crazy for the yoga roller and like and all the keywords are on the side there. Cool. So, all right, so we've got the broad category. We want to find a niche inside of this that might be a little bit less competitive. So a couple of filters I like to use straight away, I go for search volume and greater than or equal to, we saw from the niche rated method, we like to look above 4,000. So we can start off at that. Um, we'll add a filter. So greater than or equal to 4,000, add the filter. So, and then just to point out guys, we've now taken our list of almost 300 keywords. We can see we've, we've gotten rid of all those low search volume uh, products and we now have, or uh, niches and we now have 19. Yeah. And so the, what, what he just did there was really, really smart. And it, it now just identified all of the, uh, the, the medium to high demand. Yeah. Products. And you can see already, okay, so now we want to figure out what keywords are not going to be so competitive. And if we have a quick look, we can, we're looking at reviews in this space. So we're looking at reviews and already we can just see lots of high reviews. So to get rid of this, we'll do a, another quick filter and we'll filter by reviews. Uh, less than or equal to, and I like to start at just 200, 250, something like that. You can always change it later. And we, we've got one product come up. So this is the product we found, Yoga Wheel, which has got crazy amounts of search volume, almost 12,000 a month, generating a lot of revenue, but the average reviews is only 118 a month. So we've uh, opened this up before and we'll go have a look and I'll yeah. pass it over to you to we'll cool. take a deep dive with the Chrome extension. Awesome. Yeah. So super cool. And you can see how easy that was. You know, what we did is we just ran a very broad search for something that we wanted to, to figure out and, and determine the niches within that niche. And, and really, really quickly, you can see using the filters, this was a really unique case where we actually just within that filter just found one product yeah, to look at. That doesn't sometimes, usually happen. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you'll see like 15 or 12 different products to look at. This one just told us this is exactly what you should be looking at based on the filters. So really cool. And I had never heard of a yoga wheel before. So um, yeah, let's see. Now is when, if you, if you feel like you found something that's interesting, you would then go over to amazon.com and, and you pull up the Chrome extension to, to validate the idea. Just a quick note. We've got a couple of questions coming into the chat. So if you look down the bottom, there is the Q and A section. And if you have any questions, put them straight in the Q and A otherwise, because that way at the end of this presentation, we don't have to keep stopping. We can just answer them all at once. So uh, any of your questions, put them in the Q and A, please. Perfect, thank you. Okay, cool. So now what the Chrome extension is gonna do is it's gonna help us validate the data. Uh, I pulled up the Chrome extension. Hopefully people have had a chance to use this tool uh, it, that are attending the weekly training. Uh, if not, uh, anytime you have a Zonguru subscription uh, and you have downloaded the Chrome extension and you're on Google Chrome, you can come, you can run a search, and you pull it up and it's just gonna scan all those listings and it's gonna tell you, you know, how profitable are they, how many reviews do they have, and then it's gonna create averages around that whole category. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna notice is the niche score. Now we built this score to take into account what we've already talked about uh, with the niche rater method. We wanna see a numerical score uh, that helps us determine whether or not we have found a winner or a loser based on the niche rater method. So you can see here the average score across the four categories is 58%, which is actually a really good, it's a, it's a pretty good score. I'd say it's a solid score. Um, you know, this is a, a good guide and a good gauge of the profitability of this category. And, it, and it's where your eyes should probably start. Um, I'm just gonna run through the four categories real quick. It looks like the demand is, is pretty high, uh, well, medium to medium high, 52%. Competition opportunity is 40%, so it brings the score down a little bit. It's an investment sweet spot though, 71%. That's a good number. And it's because the launch budget's quite low. It seems like to, to launch and stay in stock for the first three months, uh, you're actually not looking at a terribly big investment. Um, and then finally, the revenue potential, again, based on the average price across the whole category and the sales velocity, uh, you know, this is th these are good numbers. Um, we have like FAQ articles and all sorts of guides on how to really, really dive into this stuff. But I know it's going to be asked, what's a good niche score? Um, the way that I like to break it down is anything below 50%. There's probably a, a big red flag somewhere uh, that you can probably assume uh, it would disqualify the product from being a good product. Uh, anything over 50%, 
that to me is always uh, deemed to be one that should be looked at a little bit closer. 55% above, you're looking at something that's solid and, and you really should be adding products to sales by and really diving into the data, looking at other keywords, looking at the space as a whole. 60% and above, that's good, like to really good. And then 70% and above, very hard to find and an exceptional niche. Yeah, I, yeah. Re reiterate everything there, but um, one thing I like to keep in mind with the niche uh, niche score is it's uh, it's a guide. So if it is a if you do find a seventy percent niche or an eighty percent niche, it doesn't necessarily mean bang profitable perfect product. And if you find something that's fifty percent or below, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to be a horrible product. But it's something it just gives you a better way that you can quickly look through Amazon and get a and a, a guide. Like you can you can look more into this niche from then on. Um, if, your, if your budget is a lot higher than $12,000, your, um, your niche score might ne not necessarily reflect um, your budget. So it's all up to personal circumstances, but it's just a really, really good quick guide to speeding up the process of product research. Perfect. Okay, cool. So uh, let's just go through the averages real quick. Um, you know, up at the top, you can see here, this is, there's almost, 12,000 monthly searches for this specific term yoga wheel people probably use other search terms as well to find similar products to this one so this you know you're only um going to potentially convert on just under 12,000 sales per month you know there's other search terms that people are going to be used using but this is probably one of the main ones this yeah. is a good number uh the average seller does 248 sales the average price for the product is uh just under 37 dollars uh, it looks like people are bundling multiple products together. Um, so yeah. sometimes the, high, the price is way higher. Sometimes it's a little bit lower. Um, but this is what's a really um, optimistic number here is the average number of reviews that the sellers on page one have is 140. That's pretty low. And That's, again, a determining factor on the, yeah. uh, the competition. Very low for a product with such high search volume. So yeah. this is a good niche to look into. And people seem to love the product. The average seller has a 4.5 rating. And the average seller is also making just barely under 10,000. So this, this I would still qualify as a good product because I think that there's things that we could probably do as well to outperform the average seller. Yeah. And then again, I just want to point out the launch budget uh, is uh, a, a guide and an estimate to the amount it would cost to stay in stock for at least three months on Amazon uh, based on 30% of the average price. Uh, and 30% of, of the average price means, um, well, the, Really what it means is most sellers, um, typically their cost of goods sold, so what it costs to actually purchase one item from their manufacturer is 30% of the retail price. So what we're taking a look at here is, okay, based on the sales velocity of page one, what would it cost to stay in stock for three months at a 30% uh, margin of the, the average price? And uh, that those three months are important because it just allows you to stay in stock for long enough to consider reordering and uh, and you know staying in stock on Amazon is absolutely key. So yeah. uh, so you need to do that. And it and it gives you that ability to inventory plan. So like what? So is this a category that I would actually be able to stay like competitive in in the long term? Do I have the funds to be able to afford this product? So that's another thing to keep in consideration. Sweet. So one last thing I like to do, and then we'll we'll take a look at Sales Spy, uh, we'll, and we'll also glance at this and, and take a quick pause. Uh, I want to I want to get people uh, generating ideas around how to make this product better. Um, so so begin to think about that um, you know over the next couple of minutes. Uh, but what I like to do is just like with all of our tools, you can reorder the columns. Um, so I like to just see you know who are the top sellers, what are they making. So even though the average seller does under ten thousand um, dollars, it looks like you know this top seller uh, they've generated a lot of reviews. They're kind of the heavy hitter in the space. But look at this this seller here. Um, you know, sells a visually differentiated product compared to the competition. They do uh, almost 56K uh, in gross revenue with just over 100 reviews. And then we have two sellers um, with somehow a really great uh, BSR uh, generating a lot uh, with less than five reviews. This is probably a little bit irregular and I would assume that Amazon's probably testing out those listings to yeah. see how well they can stay in stock. Uh, but then as we scroll down, we can see, you know, there are sellers that are doing over 20,000 uh, with, with a low number of reviews, which is really optimistic. Yeah. Um, and then finally, I like to filter by reviews really quick. 
so that I can see, you know, how, how competitive are those top sellers? Uh, you know, the ones that are probably converting the most sales and will I be able to, um, to outperform those sellers and, and how many of them are there? So it looks like in this case, you know, there's about 10 sellers with over 150 or so reviews. Um, so those are really strong sellers that you're, you're probably not going to be uh, wanting to focus on outperforming in the very beginning. The ones that you're going to want to be focusing on outperforming are the ones with under 100 reviews or under 150 reviews. And there is a lot of space here in this category. A lot of sellers with under 150 reviews, uh, which is, is really optimistic towards, um, you know, your ability to, to compete realistically. Yeah, that's the, first, that's the first step that I always tell you. You get the Chrome extension out, click on the reviews, see how many products are selling with reviews over 200 or so. You don't want to find way too many, but the main thing that you're looking at is you want to see those products that are under 100 reviews, are they still generating around that 10K mark? And if they are, that's still a niche that you can get into because they're the people you're going to be competing with. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. So before we look at sales by and we start to determine like how well these sellers do year round and, and how we should inventory plan, um, I want to open it up to the chat really quickly. Um, is there anything that you guys are noticing on this page that stands out to you um, from a differentiation that soft skill standpoint that we've already talked about, you know, what, what do you see on this page as, you know, potentially the most interesting product or, or something that a seller is doing uh, that kind of caught your eye? Yeah, this is almost a little bit more of a difficult product because a lot of these uh, sellers have really, really good photography and cool little pat cool little patterns and uh, things like that. But yeah, we'd like to think, uh, we'd like to see what your ideas are and how you would beat this competition. Awesome. So let me, I'm actually going to go. Kieran, he likes the lumpy one. We'll go with that. Leanne, with, she thinks different tread, design and color differences. David noticed the yellow lumpy one as well. Yeah. And you'd, you'd want to think from like a, you'd want to talk to a yoga person and think like, what sort of colors are they into? What sort of patterns? What sort of, what is the product even made out of? Things like that, because they might be um, more environmentally conscious, not wanting to use so many, something that's like recyclable for, for one could be an idea. Yeah, absolutely. So a few things that I just noticed um, that you guys have already pointed out is the, the, the functional differentiation with the, the lumpy one. This looks like it would probably work out some knots in your back as well. Um, and it also, it, it looks just like, like people have said, it just stands out on page one. Um, I'm noticing some really great branding on mm -hmm. some of the packaging that are shown in the photos and the sellers that are showing off the packaging in their photos um, do a very good job. Uh, I like that some of the sellers have selected a really clean um, sleek, almost something similar to like Nike or Adidas style of logos. And they're really uh, showing that in the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, I also really liked um, these ones. These are functionally different uh, in form. Um, you know, just the, the shape, this one has a much more aggressive arc. And then if you flip it on the other side, probably a little bit more mellow on your back. for yeah. exercises. These, these ones do look cool and they're visually differentiated. But one thing to notice is you want to go by the numbers a bit as well. So if you're looking for a, a different product, you'd want to pull up the Chrome extension and see, are these products that are actually shaped differently? Are they actually selling better than the round ones? You want to go with the numbers as well. So see what the patterns are, like what are the, what are the patterns for where the revenue is coming from? Are they coming from the funny shapes? Are they coming from the ones with bumps? Are they coming from the ones that have all different sizes? And then base, base your product around that as well. Yeah. I'm also noticing some really great bundling as well. It looks like this person has, you know, multiple straps and bags um, and they show off their packaging as well. It looks like this seller, they even put it in their title, which is surprising. Um, they really stress the importance of this ebook mm. um, with all the different yoga poses and the way to use their product. Um, I'm noticing, you know, different materials as well. Um, some of them have this like cork material and then the wood, some are plastic. This one's cool. It looks like, you know, uh, it's probably uh, maybe marketed towards a more male audience um, with it being, you know, all black. Um, and actually, this is a, a good point, too. I, I have a friend that does this, and, and it's, it's pretty impressive. He, he actually sells two identical products that compete against each other on page one. Um, they're, they're identical products, but one is tailored towards a male audience, completely different brand, and then the other one is tailored really? towards... Two different brands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to a female audience. Uh, 
just with the color and the design, the photos, the listing copy, the way that he's done it. And, uh, and he's ensured that he, anytime a, a male or female comes to look for his, his product, they're probably selecting one of his, uh, which is, is really smart. Um, cool. So some good stuff here. I'm excited to see what the love hate tool tells us, uh, what people love and hate about the, pro the products and how we can generate some ideas, but maybe I'll just turn it over to you real quick and we can look at sales by, uh, which is going to show us uh, the sales over time for these products. Cool. So sales by is a product that a tool that is going to show you a product sales history over time. So when you, are uh, getting, when you, are uh, running a Chrome extension search, you are seeing the data that we are estimating for that day. So if you come in, if you find a niche that you're really liking, you want to add as many products as you can into sales by, and then we can get the history of sales over the past year or custom range, whatever you like. So this is a, a must do part of your product research um, phase. So once you have found a product, you can just enter the ASIN in here, click add, and then uh, the product will populate inside of sales by here. Uh, a few things to look at is it shows you your revenue, sales, obviously your profit um, and the by day under here in the gray. Um, but the main thing to keep, it, keep look at, a look at is the graph. So you can open up this historical graph and it'll show you the historical sales of this product over the last one year. So you can change the date, like you can change the time range with this drop down button here. Um, I always like to look at a year because you want to see, is this product peaking in certain uh, seasons? Is, it, is there times of the year where it doesn't make any sales? And that way you can plan your inventory for that time. Um, so you can see for this product coming just after December, it actually picks up a lot of products, uh, picks up a lot of sales. So the yellow column here is, um, is the revenue generated. The, the blue jagged line is the BSR. So the usual correlation is that the lower your BSR, the higher your sales. That, that just means the higher you are on, on page one. Um, and this other little white jagged line is the amount of units sold per day. So as you scroll across, you can actually see how many units uh, we're selling each day based on um, our algorithm. So really useful information. If, you are, if you're looking for a product that's summer based, chances are during, uh, during December and, and um, USA's winter, the, the sales are going to drop off. Um, and then if you have a product that's really giftable, maybe in Christmas time, it might be peaking up a lot. So it's just really good product to use for planning for those type of things. Um, another thing that I like to do with the sales buyer is make sure you get a big range of products. So, so here we have um, about, what have we got? Five different wheels. And I've, and I've, got the different wheels based on their competition. So I've got a lot of wheels with say 20, 30 reviews, and then I've got some with 80, 150 and 650. So I've got a range. So I can see, are these products uh, selling differently depending on whether, uh, depending on how many reviews they ha have. And like, I'm gonna be probably more competing with this product down here with 22 reviews. So this is the one, main one I'd wanna look at. Um, and if you're seeing some sort of irregular sales, it's jumping up and down a bit, but I think this is po possibly because it's a new product. You can see it's been sold since July 24th this year. So he's still trying to like find his way on Amazon. He hasn't been too established yet. Um, and this white gap here is potentially where he ran out of stock. Like if you see, maybe not for one day, I'm not sure there, but like if, if you ever saw like just a drop where there was no sales, when otherwise it looks like he's getting pretty consistent sales, chances are that person's run out of stock. So just another thing to keep in mind there. Any points to add? Uh, yeah, just, just one point. Another good indicator of a seller that uh, ran out of stock or is potentially just being punished by Amazon for any number of reasons. Because uh, again, we, we don't know for sure why a, a seller's um, <clears throat> revenue and sales or BSR would fluctuate and spike. Um, but it, it's, it's typically just because they've done something wrong in the eyes of Amazon and Amazon is therefore reacting to that. Uh, running out is, is uh, the most common. Um, but you can see here, uh, you know, the, this huge spike in BSR and major drop off in sales is probably because their inventory index dropped below a certain threshold. Amazon either saw that they were going to run out of stock or mm -hmm. they did. Um, and then they, they sold all their, their reserve units and then they got their, um, stock back and luckily because they had been selling for so long, you know, once inventory was back in, um, 
back in Amazon's warehouse. I'm assuming that Amazon was able to, to quickly pivot and uh, you know reverse the big spike in the BSR uh, so that they could start generating sales again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Another thing to note with SalesFi is don't be worried about adding, depending on what plan you're on, don't be worried about adding too many products into SalesFi because um, unlike some of our other, our other tools, if you delete a product within SalesFi, you get that um, product back. So you could you could run, say here, 300 sessions on different wheels. It's a bit excessive, but you potentially could. And then next time you went to look for a product, you could just delete those and you'd get those sessions back. Yeah, totally. Okay, cool. So the last tool that we're going to focus on, because now what we've done is we've generated the idea, we validated the data, and then we kind of understand how the main sellers do uh, year round. We're going to look at love hate to just see if we can generate a little bit more ideas around um, uh, ways that we can make the product different, what people are saying uh, about the products and why they're saying it. So um, in this case, if this is the first time that you're <clears throat> seeing this tool, it's really cool. It used to be that if you wanted to get insight into a listing and products, um, you needed to actually go into each individual listing. You'd have to read the reviews, maybe sort and filter yourself. Uh, what this tool does is it takes the top 50 listings for the keyword that you, you choose. So in this case, I think we use yoga wheel and it takes all those products and scans the reviews. It takes a couple of minutes, but it scans all the reviews that they've generated and then it creates word clouds. It takes all the four and five star reviews, the ones where people really enjoy the product. It creates a word cloud around commonly used phrases and words for the four and five star reviews. And then it does the same for the one and two star reviews, uh, what people hated. And what you're gonna notice is trends and commonalities uh, in the, the way in which people perceive the product. And it's a really good way for you to not only kind of generate ideas around making your product better, kind of copying what people are doing really well, but it's a, it's a really good way for you to understand the pain points that sellers have already faced or yeah. are in the, in the process of facing and ensuring that you're going to your supplier when you're, when you're looking to create that golden sample um, and, and actually truly launch, that you have all those pain points already targeted and in mind. Yeah, and it's, it's really necessary to go through the love-hate tool because like we did a brainstorm before we thought what are the best looking products okay we visually differentiate and we'll uh we'll just make a new product that looks different to them but there might be some underlying issues or underlying um benefits to these products that we might not be aware of so if you use a love hate tool you get to find what are these people actually really loving and hating to include or not include in your listing absolutely Cool. So it looks like um, in the hate section, we have a, a low number of reviews, which is why we're not uh, retrieving all that many um, uh, words in the word cloud here. Uh, what you could do, and we actually have this error message up here as well, just stating that. Um, what you could do in this case, um, just, just as a little uh, tidbit of information here, is you can copy these ASINs up here, and it's going to copy all the ASINs from this session here, 46 products. And then you could even add more. So you could add another product phrase um, to include more, like if you've done keyword research and yoga wheel is one term that people use, but yoga circle or cylinder yeah, is another one. It's a bit of a hard one. Yeah. You, yeah, you'd want to you'd still use a keyword that is very particular to your product because you don't want you don't, you don't want yoga mats and all these different other product all these other products coming up that aren't really relevant to what you're uh, you're deciding on. That's exactly right. Okay, cool. So let's just I want to make sure that we spend some time on the Q and A. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to wrap this up as quick as I can. Um, so with the, uh, the plastic wheel right. or with the hate section, uh, it looks like, uh, people are saying, Oh, this is not sustainable. So I think you had mentioned that actually, you yeah. know, focusing on your target demographic, understanding who your audience is, people that like yoga probably are also very careful about being environmentally conscious. They like to buy from, uh, uh, environmentally sustainable companies yeah. and those products, if they see cheap processed plastic that, um, you know, if they have to throw the product away is going to end up in a landfill, that's going to make them uncomfortable. They're going to probably talk about that in their, in their reviews. Uh, looks like the cork, uh, as well for this cork product, maybe a fell apart, disintegrated, cracked, yeah. uh, something that you want to focus this, on. This is a product that people are going to lie on and, and you just want to make sure that it's going to be super sturdy and, like, is there, is there ways that you have to look after this product so it doesn't break down and 
because you really don't want this product to be breaking and people falling on their backs and injuring themselves or something yeah. like that because that could end up in some pretty bad reviews. Yeah, seriously. And it looks like it did for this product a couple of times. Uh, yeah. It looks like they, their, their weight just crushed the product. I mean, somebody could get cut by the product and then yeah. you, you might have a serious uh, problem on your hands. So these are re this is really, really good information to have. Also worth noting, you know, with the cork, I, I don't know about anywhere else, but Los Angeles seems to be a breeding ground for very strange exercises. And these like crazy and like you know people getting into these very trendy exercises and people are really into uh, like sweat yoga here where they're doing really difficult yoga but they're also doing it in a really really hot really humid room. Um, <laughs> it sounds terrible to me, but some people love it. But that would be something that you'd want to um, to uh, to focus on and, and understand and make sure that uh, you know with the cork. I would imagine that if it gets wet. It probably gets gross. It might also kind of disintegrate uh, at a faster rate as well. So stress testing um, and really beating up the product is is a really good way as well of uh, avoiding uh, potential bad reviews. Yeah. Cool. So let's see here. Um, so, yeah, and another thing like if you're doing hot yoga or something like that, you'd, you'd want to make sure that that grip could look stay on you and you're not going to slip off and uh, things like that as well and maybe antibacterial, there's all different ideas you could come up with. Cool. This is not a, uh, this isn't a very obvious differentiation um, tactic, but I love seeing this right here. Uh, nice quality and wonderful customer service. One very, very soft way to differentiate your product and your brand. And one way to ensure that you get a higher review rate is to not sleep on your customer service. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a personal passion for it. I make sure that if anybody's had a bad experience with my products, it is my goal. It's almost a game to, to make sure that they uh, leave feeling like, okay, these guys actually care. They, they want to make sure that my experience is, is turned around. Um, so delivering that in this case actually generated a review. And it's, yeah. it's a really subtle way to differentiate it's yourself. A, it's a big opportunity for reviews too. People, uh, uh, they start with over-the-top service, like great service that you actually care. It's actually a human behind it. It's not just a big company. Um, and most of the time then that's a, that's where a lot of your five-star reviews will come from. You get a negative review, follow it up with great customer service and you can turn it into a big positive. Awesome guys. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Um, really appreciate uh, the, the participation thus far. Um, you know, just to remind you guys, we've, we've uh, used keywords on fire tool to generate ideas. We validated it using Chrome extension that we use sales by the inventory plan. Finally, we use love hate to, to just better understand the product category. We deep dove into this product uh, and, and, and presented it in just 40, like 45 minutes. So you can see that if you use this method, uh, product research is not all that scary. Um, yeah. And, and it's, it's actually more approachable than I think most people give it credit for. It. Yeah. And I don't think I mentioned it at the start, but with your, with your keywords on fire searches, just find a hobby that's interesting to you. If yoga is your hobby, if fishing is your hobby, do that as the, the main broad keys, keyword search and keywords on fire. Um, and then try and find a, a product within something that you're actually interested in because then you know your customer's avatar later on down the track when you're getting frustrated with Amazon, um, you're, you're still going to be able to feel a bit more passionate about your product. You're going to be able to market it better. You're going to be able to know all the pain points of the customer. So that's a good place to start. But then obviously follow the numbers and make sure you're doing a product that's profitable. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, guys, so we're going to go over to the Q&A now. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. We're gonna go over to the Q&A now. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, the older ones and, and if we've answered the question already in the presentation, I'm just gonna close the question. Um, Mary asks, what is a good rating number or percentage for competition? Um, I, I just kind of wanna reiterate a point that we already said, you know, use the competition opportunity and the niche score as a guide. Yeah. It's very, very variable. It's dependent on the, the category and your ability to stand out in that competition. I wouldn't focus too much on the, the actual number itself. No. And the human eye can tell, like we like to say 55%, but if you're looking down and you're use the method we showed with um, what are the products uh, with under hundred reviews selling? Because that's who you're competing with. Uh, what are their images like? Is their, opti is their products um, optimized? Are using all the keywords um, and you can't go wrong. Perfect, cool. All right, Brooke asks, can you filter by profit rather than turnover by any chance, or this will be private information not available by the API? Second, 
What about finding enduring niche products? Do you think we could get distracted by hot products that come and go? Um, really good questions. These are, these are awesome. Yeah. Uh, for the first, no, we can't filter by profit. Our estimated profit is, like we said before, a, a average of around 30%. So use that as your guide. Profit's probably going to be around 30% of the price point. Um, as for inquiring in finding enduring niche products, that's where you want to use like sales buy, make a custom range. Is this product selling all selling well throughout the whole year? How long with it? Like add a heap of these different products to sales buy. You can see when these products were listed um, on Amazon in the top left there. So you can see um, have they been around long? Have they been around for three months or something? Is it is it a fad? Like you could do Google trend searches. So Definitely look for products that aren't fads, like hot products, I guess is what you're saying. But um, yeah, I think I think just using the sales by data, you'll be able to figure that out. Sweet. All right. Uh, Mary asks, sometimes I've noted that the demand is over 50%, but the search volume is less than 50. So does this suggest that people are looking for this search term, but does not convert to a sale? Um, so, that's a good question. I think it goes back to something we touched on a little bit earlier, which is sometimes you, you might not be actually using the right search term to represent the, uh, the actual main buyer search term, the one that most of the people that are potentially gonna buy that product are using in their searches. You're probably using one that's a little bit more obscure and that's why we're showing the lower search volume. Yeah, and the demand on, the, um, you notice the demand is over 50% because lots of those products on page one are still popping up for that keyword that might not necessarily be the main keyword, but they're still popping up. They're still selling a lot. Um, so that's why you're getting a high search volume, but yeah, it might not be the main keyword. Yeah. And this would be a really good opportunity too to use the keyword that you're using um, and then see what are the listings adding in their title? Yeah. Um, because the title is typically where people get the most juice from their keywords. And so they're going to pack it with the most important ones. Um, and so understanding what people are using in their title, but then also run a keywords on fire session for um, the keyword that you're using and you're going to get a list of 300 keywords and then filter by search volume. And then you're going to probably have a better idea of the higher search volume relevant keywords. All right, cool. Uh, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. Sarah asks, is there any, an easy way to track a product's price change over a period? For example, whether it has drastically dropped over the last 12 months, Sarah, that's a really good question at the moment. No, but this is, I know it is in our backlog. Um, and that's something that we're going to add to sales by is, um, is not only the, the price trends and changes, but also, um, I, I probably shouldn't be sharing too much information about this because it's, it's, it's not being developed yet, but it is on the way is, is actual alerts. We're going to be adding a ton of new um, alerts to accounts, one of which is uh, price changes so that you, you understand and know when your competition is changing their price so you can uh, react appropriately. Yeah. And another manual way you could do it if you really are interested in one product is to go back to the sales buy, put in a custom range, and then um, just have a look through the different custom ranges and you'll notice like the price will change in sales buy. So you'll be able to tell when, when they've changed. Awesome, thank you for your question. Really appreciate that. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, okay, cool. I really appreciate Brooke Roman. Um, Brooke's very involved. Yeah, yeah, uh, answer, answering the questions for us. Um, yeah, thank you very much for that. Uh, let's let's just have another quick look. What is yeah. BSR? Is it good for us as competition or as sellers? I'm not really sure what Roman's asking. So yeah, as Brooke said, BSR stands for your bestseller rating. The lower your best bestseller rating is towards one, that's that's uh, better for that product. The more sales you're going to be making. So yeah, yeah as Brooke and, said, and, yeah. And I yeah, I know just because it's maybe one of the more basic things that um, the details can be lost. But the, the BSR is the the score that Amazon is giving you in your main buyer category. category. Um, so it's like where you stack up compared to everything else in the main category. Uh, so if you have, you know, you're the best performing product in home and kitchen, you're going to be the number one BSR. Yeah. Um, and you're probably making millions of dollars a month uh, on Amazon in this case. Yeah. So it's not judged on the keyword. So if you're top of page one, that doesn't necessarily mean you're the top BSR. Yeah. Uh, Carmel asks, uh, where can I find the other presentations you've done? 
Um, we'll make sure to provide a link uh, to the insights page where you can find um, all of our, our past replays uh, if you're interested in, in checking out uh, older deep dives. Yeah. Um, and then yes, thank you, Brooke. I actually forgot to do this. Um, this is not a shameless plug to get you know followers yeah. to our accounts. We uh, really, really do, just like with this free weekly training, we really try our best to uh, provide content that is educational and, uh, and is there not to like sell any of our products, but to, to actually uh, help and coach people. So follow us on YouTube. Um, we push a bunch of content out that's really valuable. Um, and then also, if you're in the, um, in the product research phase, follow us on Instagram. It's a page devoted to ideas and inspiration around really cool, interesting products uh, that are selling really well on Amazon right now. Yeah, and just at Zomiru and everything. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool guys. So we have time for maybe two more questions. Um, let's see here. And if we don't get to your question, um, you can go ahead and just ask us uh, at uh, any of our support channels. So support at zongaroo.com. And I'm gonna make sure our team uh, is really timely about um, answering questions from the webinar. Uh, Brooke, that's another good question. What's a typical minimum number of reviews for Love Hate to work? Uh, on, off the top of my head, I don't know when we're going to show that uh, that error message, but if we are showing it, just add more. Um, a lot. It's actually not only dependent on the number of products, but it's also dependent on the number of reviews that those products yeah. have. Um, so there's a fair few products in that last uh, in uh, yoga rollers, but they weren't getting very many bad reviews. So um, that's why it just kind of put that error there. So Roman asked, I uh, quoted us, you're looking for products that generate $10,000 with less than 150 reviews. Is that gross per month? Yes, that is gross. Because yeah. um, again, if you, if you net that out at a, the average 30% margin, what that means is uh, you're still putting $36,000 either into your pocket or to invest back into your business a year annually. So yeah, really good numbers. And that's, that's you know, at minimum. Um, okay, cool. One more question, guys. Brooke, have you thought about a country of origin tool, perhaps by color, if the data is available, let us keep exchange rate shipping metrics in mind. Uh, I can't give away too much uh, around this question, but uh, our, our product team has been really um, putting their noses down and, and we're actually, we're uh, looking to, to hear from our, our users about tools that they would, they would potentially want. Uh, but also we have some really exciting partnerships. We're gonna have access to new data points um, and this might be one of those things that we're going to be able to roll out pretty soon. Uh, but we have, we have some really, really cool tools on the way that I wish I could share more about, but I can't, yeah. uh, but we are thinking about that. Brooke. Awesome. Cool. So I think, uh, we've answered all the questions. Um, if, if I did miss one, just go ahead and, and ask our support team and we'll answer it. Um, I want to just, um, say thank you for everybody that attended. Um, and everybody that participated. Yeah, I appreciate um, the participation. Like it, it makes it a lot more enjoyable for us. Doesn't You don't feel like you're just talking to no one. So it was great. Thanks guys. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I see some familiar names, uh, uh, people that are still attending. So uh, good to see those names. Uh, we hope, you know, we're both uh, members of the support team and we're, we're here to help you guys. So, um, you know, we want to hear from you. Reach out to our support team if you have any other questions, you need help with anything. Uh, you have questions about the tool. Really appreciate it, guys. Um, and we'll send a replay tomorrow. Yeah, so absolutely. And guys, I just want to also say, um, you know, we're going to be probably reaching out to people that participated. Um, you know, we'd love to hear more about, you know, additional things that we could add to this presentation. Uh, we have also a weekly uh, training session, which starts tomorrow and will be uh, probably at the same time each, each week yeah. um, for sellers. So how to use the Zunguru tool suite. Uh, to better optimize and, and automate your business. Um, so tune into that if, uh, if you're curious about what else we offer and, um, and also how to take advantage of, uh, of you know, industry strategy and, and things that are going on. So, so register for that. Uh, and if, if you want the link and you don't have it, just, just reach out to our support team. Cool. All good. All right, cool. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, guys. See, you yeah, see you next week. Bye for now.